Welcome back to Watercolor Theory. Today I'll be demonstrating this herd of elephants. Here are my five takeaways in less than 10 minutes. Takeaway number one, more characters, more problems. Actually, more characters, you either need to be more abstract and plan for that or plan your painting for more details. I didn't plan quite as well as I should have and ended up having to do a lot of work in the end. Takeaway number two, and this will always be a takeaway for me, patience. I had this piece of paper just flooded with color and I should have done it in segments or at least allowed it to dry partially. So uh, patience will always be a challenge for me and I'll have to come up with solutions that force me to be more patient in the future. While I have you here, have you subscribed yet? About 75% of my viewers have not yet subscribed. So if just a portion of you did subscribe, that would double my subscriptions and get the word out to more people about my videos. Takeaway number three, this ties into number two, and that would be brushwork. If I had done some brushwork around the elephants and painted their outline or the negative space of their silhouette and then splattered, then allowed that to dry and then laid in the next layer of color, I would have had a better turnout, I believe. So brushwork in a traditional manner mixed with the splattering will help me create my own unique style, which will get better and better every time. Takeaway number four, granulated colors need to be saved for secondary and tertiary washes. I tried some granulating colors in this painting during my splattering process, which is very wet. And that wetness causes the paper to buckle, sometimes excessively. And as I mentioned earlier, I had this pretty soaked. So in the peaks and valleys, the peaks don't collect any of that granulated color. And then in the valleys, the granulated color, those heavier, larger pigments settle in. And then when I lift away, it takes away a disproportionate amount from the high points to the low points. And it just, it didn't quite turn out quite as good as I'd like. It still turned out well, but just not as well as I'd hoped.
And takeaway number five, progress, not perfection. I can't beat myself up. Still a great painting, still made a good video. And, you know, I learned something from it. So we have to focus uh, on not the challenge, but the solution. And so today's challenges bring us to tomorrow's solutions. And I've realized that two out of three of my paintings probably aren't going to turn out quite as good as I expected. This herd of elephants, the painting of the rhinoceros behind me, those were the two that didn't turn out quite the way I'd hoped. But what did I learn from those two that I brought to the elephant behind me? This elephant, I took my time on the brushwork and the splattering in the beginning. My second wash was just painting the negative space on one side of the elephant to accentuate its silhouette and then paint in a little bit in the ears to make those stand out a little bit from the background. And I'm very happy with this second rendition of an African elephant emerging from the dust. Here is the photo reference and credit. Here are some of the colors I used. And here are some progress photos along the way. While I have you here, have you subscribed yet? About 75% of my viewers have not yet subscribed. So if just a portion of you did subscribe, that would double my subscriptions and get the word out to more people about my videos. I really am enjoying exploring this new style that I've created over the last year, and I'm so happy to share it with you. And I hope that you realize that by sharing it with others, it helps me grow this channel and might inspire someone else to pick up a brush and give this painting style a try. So please like, subscribe, tell a friend, whatever. Until next time, happy painting.